Hey guys and girls and welcome to Wildlife Documentary. This is the first video in this video series where I'm going to tell you about how my Nikon Z6 and my Nikkor 200-500 f5.6 hold up for wildlife filmmaking. All the videos on my channel up until now were shot with this setup, without exception. The nature scenes you can sometimes see in the background throughout this video series were also shot with this camera. There are already some videos out there talking about this topic, so what sets this video series apart? Well, first of all, the topic of wildlife filming, especially with regards to birds that are very small, very agile and usually very shy, is not discussed all too often in combination with this gear. But this video series will focus mostly on that and will contain information on many different aspects that are important for this endeavor such as the question of audio and sound on this camera, which is rarely covered. This includes the pre-amplifiers of the camera and the lowest noise floor of the quietest setting, what actually is the quietest setting, it is not level 1 by the way, and what different kinds of audio gear work well in combination with this camera. And secondly, I like to read up on and inform myself thoroughly about the gear I am about to buy, and once I own it, I like to test my gear in detail to find the best ways to use the camera, and I have done that for almost a year now. So I know quite a lot about the strengths and weaknesses of this camera. So this video series is also going to be filled with quite advanced details. That said, let's begin by talking about the handling of the gear. When filming wildlife such as birds, you sometimes need to hold the camera very still for a steady sitting shot of the animal and sometimes you need to move fast to follow the animal's quick movements. For it to look professional, you need to have good stabilization to make your videos look smooth. While stabilization is good with the Nikon Z6 and the 200-500mm lens, in theory, it is a bit of a problem with this specific combination. You see, the FTC adapter that adapts the F-mount lens to the set-mount body of the Nikon Z6 does not allow to use the 5-axis stabilization of the lens, and instead only allows for 3-axis stabilization. As far as I am informed, the Z6's in-body stabilization does work in combination with the lens, but whatever the technical details, the stabilization does not do a perfect job when hand-holding at least. I refrain from hand-holding this gear unless it is absolutely necessary, which especially happens when birds or other animals are almost directly above you in the trees, or if you are dealing with many very quick animals surrounding you. The weight of the gear, especially when paired with additional audio gear, is another reason why hand-holding is not the best option. It is quite heavy. If you use a tripod then, on a ball head like I'm using it, the stabilization is quite good and enough for pretty much everything, even if the ball head is completely loosened. That the camera sits on something, like a tripod, while being moved to follow animals gives it enough stability to deal with the rest of the shaking and stabilizes the footage quite well. Best not to cheap out on ball heads though, because one that supports only up to 8 kilograms did break while in use, even though the Z6 and the 200-500 to don't even weigh half of that together. There are also gimbal heads, but they are heavier and if you need to walk further distances with your gear in the wild, then carrying the camera, the lens, possible audio gear, the tripod and the gimbal head can weigh you down. Another part of handling is the button layout and accessibility of functions without the need for menu diving each time you want to change something. There are custom buttons you can appoint certain functions to. I use the function button 1 for switching between FX and DX crop mode, so that in situations where I need to find a small animal in the bushes, I can quickly and without obvious movement zoom out a bit because I'm usually always in crop mode for further reach, when I'm in video mode. For picture mode, I use full frame mode all the time, as you can easily crop in post, but you cannot do that with video. As a side note, 
Zooming the lens is not easy as you need to turn the zoom ring quite a bit to get from 200mm all the way to 500 I basically always stay at 500mm and in crop mode and will then have 750mm focal length, which is often quite enough for birds. The second function button switches focus modes, that is what I assigned it to do. But I do not usually change focus mode as for wildlife filming manual focus and learning how to use manual focus is key. Once you practiced manual focus in video a bit, it will be much faster and much more reliable than autofocus. The reason for this is that the camera does not know what you want to focus on. Telling it so by moving the focus points around is too slow, at least for birds. Moving the camera to align the animal with the focus points selected does work better, but requires you to move your camera and therefore move the subject around in the frame. For video, as opposed to pictures, it is often much more important to keep your animal in the same place inside the frame, or at least to keep the scene as steady as possible. Even if you align the focus points with the animal, the animal might just slightly be covered by a leaf in front of it, and then the camera might miss focus. Manual focus, on the other hand, is smooth and you are able to move the focus exactly where you want it to be. The camera provides manual focus aids with colored dots on the screen that help tremendously to nail the focus properly, although the dots aren't always accurate. If the animal is rather steady and I have time, I use the OK button before recording to zoom in one to one and see the animal from real close. Again, you can program your camera that way. That way you can absolutely perfectly nail the focus. But this takes time and isn't possible while recording, which is a pity. Another drawback of autofocus in video mode is that the focusing of the lens is quite loud and is picked up by the microphones, even when you use shotgun mics. I've seen on the internet that if F-mount lenses are mounted onto Nikon Z-mount cameras, they start making this noise when focusing. I don't know if this is correct and I don't have an F-mount camera to test this, so it might not be a problem of the lens itself. Alright, this was it for this part, the part about handling. But more parts will follow. So don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments and see you in the next one.